of dual class set we will continue chapter number 5 that is circular system uh, today we will uh, start with uh, a very complex process of mechanism that you see uh, there in circular system that is blood clotting blood clotting okay blood clotting which is also called coagulation of blood coagulation of blood all right okay blood clotting or coagulation of blood so this blood clotting or coagulation of blood is a complex process is a complex process uh, where uh, the different things are involved different proteins enzymes are involved all right and uh, uh, so uh, okay let's get started how it happens all right uh, so to see the clotting of the blood, you know what clotting in fact is that you know and this clotting is very much important to plot the flow of blood when the part of the body is injured. Alright, so from that injured part, the blood starts flowing. Okay, and after some time, you know, the blood stops flowing. So how it happens? So it all happens because of the clotting of the blood. So in that particular injured part, the blood will be clotted and blocks the flow of water i mean blood okay that's very important so for the clotting of the blood the, uh, your platelets play a very important role there okay so that means when some part of the body is injured so that time the blood vessels get damaged okay and also the platelets get affected so that time platelets mainly platelets okay platelets so platelets means okay, you know, which we discussed in the last session also, uh, are the blood cells, okay, RBC, WBC and platelets. So, so platelets are the blood corpuscles, okay, which are responsible for the clotting of the blood. Alright, so when the part is damaged, okay, when part is injured that time, you know, the blood vessels and platelets get damaged and at that time, platelets produce a kind of, you know, enzyme okay it produces a kind of enzyme it produces an enzyme all right so this enzyme now in turn produce another kind of protein it produces that is this enzyme now pr produce another kind of you know uh, you know uh, enzyme uh, i mean protein which is called thrombin thrombin see the different kinds of chemicals you know being involved in the mechanism of this blood clotting. First platelets produce an enzyme, that enzyme now produces another kind of you know, protein which is called thrombin. Okay, then this thrombin has a kind of cap capacity uh, by virtue of which you, you know, uh, this thrombin converts fibrinogen, converts fibrinogen into uh, fibrin see here thrombin a kind of protein has the capacity to convert this fibrinogen into fibrin what is fibrinogen so fibrinogen is also a kind of protein which we discussed last time when we are going through the compulsion of plasma okay blood plasma all right so from plasma from plasma when the fibrinogen is removed then that plasma, that conditional plasma is called serum, which we have discussed in the last session. All right, so this thrombin now uh, converts this fibrinogen into fibrin. All right, fibrin. Then what happens? This fibrin makes a kind of, you know, net-like structure there. Okay, a mesh work is formed out there. Okay, that means net net like structure is formed there in that injured point which traps rbc which traps you know red blood cells all right and from that trap from that trap when rbc is trapped that time what happens is that you know this uh, serum that you know that uh, pale liquid uh, watery liquid pale water liquid oozes out okay pale water liquid oozes out which contains no fibrinogen, that time that uh, pale watery fluid which is not having fibrinogen in that 
is called serum. All right, that means when this fibrin makes a net or there makes net, makes a net like structure there that traps all RBC, and from that what happens is that you know that uh, your watery fluid substance only comes out that oozes out. Okay, which is actually called serum. All right, then what happens slowly that uh, net like structure along with the blood cells especially rbc you know gets solidified guess what solidified and a clot is formed and what is formed a clot is formed so this process of the formation of this clot is called blood clotting so that way you know the blood clotting takes place or the coagulation of blood takes place there where you know this fibrin or, or everything out here plays very important role out there so that way the clot is formed there and this clot you know blocks the flow of blood that means this clot you know uh, you know uh, stops the flow of blood that blocks in fact it blocks suppose is a is a is a cord part is an injured from where the blood is flowing so when it is solidified out here okay then it will block the flow of blood okay which is very important otherwise if it doesn't take this out there or if no clotting there or let's say if no platelets there then what happens is that no such clotting takes place and you know the flowing of blood continues to take place and uh, you know if it is not immediately treated then a person will die because of the loss of blood okay so here to check the loss of blood this platelets play very important role out there. There are uh, two diseases uh, where the number of platelets gets badly reduced to a great extent. Okay, uh, there are there are diseases uh, purpura and dengue. Okay, so these are the two diseases where the number of platelets I know it gets badly reduced to a great extent. Okay, so now let's talk about functions of blood. Functions of blood. Okay, what are the functions of blood or why is blood important? It is very important that you all know because all the you know uh, transporting uh, uh, functions there in the body, all the circulating you know. Uh, functions there in the body is done by this uh, blood only. Alright, so number one, uh, it transports transports nutrients. Okay, it transports what? Nutrients. So nutrients means you know something which we eat. So whatever we eat, you know, gets completely digested there in the small intestine. Okay, so, and after the digestion, so they are absorbed. Okay. And after absorbing the digested food materials, materials are sent to the liver and then in the liver either it is absorbed or utilized there. Okay, either it is stored there or utilized there. And this carrying from uh, the small intestine to the liver and from liver to the different parts of the body in fact to all the living cells is done by the blood itself. Okay, second, uh, transports of respiratory gases, all right, respiratory gases. So, respiratory gases are, you know, oxygen and carbon dioxide. See, uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide, which are the respiratory gases, you know, are taken from or are, you know, transported from the lungs to the different parts of the body and from different parts of the body back to the lungs. How it is, let me tell you in detail. See, when we inhale the air, all right. So from the air, what happens is that, you know, your hemoglobin present in RBC peaks up oxygen only, okay. Peaks up oxygen only there in the lungs and from the lungs it is transported to all the living cells. Okay, and in the cells when that oxygen is utilized for the oxidation of food, then carbon dioxide is formed. So that carbon dioxide is again picked up by hemoglobin and is brought back to the lungs and from lungs it is thrown out. 
So this is done by the blot only. Okay. Then third one. Uh, third one we have this blot transports or uh, carries waste materials also. It carries waste. Okay. Carries waste. Waste materials. Okay, it carries waste materials. So the different things when we eat, some waste products are produced. Okay, some extra products are produced. So these extra products are carried by the blood and taken to the excretory organs, mainly the kidneys. Okay, and from kidneys, you know, uh, it is uh, thrown out. Let us say the urea. All right, or uh, urea especially is used in the formation of urine and is brought down to the urine bladder and it is thrown out. So carrying from the different parts of the body to the excretory organ or system is done by the blood. Alright and number four it also maintains 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 water balance in the body. It maintains water balance in the body. Okay blood also maintains water balance in the body all right blood also regulates blood also regulates body temperature what is that body temperature all right by you know distributing the heat okay by distributing the heat to the different parts of the body you know this blood also regulates our body temperature all right, so suppose if the temperature is in, in, in one particular region of the body only, then what happens is that, uh, that the heat in that particular region gets abnormally increased. Consequently, that particular region will be uh, badly affected. All right, so that it gets equally distributed by the blood itself. This is how it maintains the body temperature also. So our body, our, our normal body temperature is 37 degree Celsius that you all know. Okay, so this is number five. And number six, we have it also, you know, uh, provides immunity. Blood also provides immunity. It also provides immunity. Okay, immunity. So in the last session, we talked about the function of WBC. So function of WBC is to provide the immunity so it uh, kills the germ this is causing germs if any by any chance enters so they are all killed by wbc wbc means the part of your blood all right so that way killing the germs you know this wbc or your blood also protects us from different kinds of diseases all right and also it prevents the excessive excessive loss of blood also prevents all right, excessive, excessive loss of blood. See, the uh, blood also prevents the excessive loss of, you know, blood. Okay, excessive loss of uh, blood uh, during, uh, you know, uh, any accidents or when we are we, we meet with an accident that time something you know some parts may be injured so from injured reason the blood may be you know uh, going out but by way of the blood clotting which we just now discussed okay by way of the mechanism of mechanism of blood clotting or blood coagulation what happens that in that reason the uh, you know uh, clot is pumped so the blood gets you know uh, blocked there otherwise you know what happens is that blood blood will be continuously flowing out and uh, consequently we may be dying so this is how blood plays very important role in protecting us or in doing all those works there in the body okay so that way the blood is very very important in our body all right okay now let's talk about uh, blood vessels blood vessels okay so blood vessels are uh, something like you know uh, pipe like structures there in the body through which the different kinds of blood uh, you know flow okay the different kinds of blood flow that is uh, uh, 
different kinds of blood means uh, oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood. Oxygenated blood means uh, pure blood rich in oxygen and deoxygenated blood means impure blood rich in carbon dioxide. Okay, so these blood vessels are of three types. All right, artery, okay, vein and capillary. Artery vein and capillary. Okay, this is the, uh, they are all written in similar form. The plural form of arteries, arteries, veins and capillaries. All right, so let's talk about arteries. Okay, so arteries uh, have thick, elastic and muscular wall. Thick, T-H-I-C-K, thick, thick, okay, elastic and muscular, muscular wall. All right, which is also shown here in the diagram page number 58 is here on the board rather than drawing drawing it on the board i'll just show you then the book itself please look at the book all right so thick elastic and muscular wall and they carry the blood from heart to the different parts of the body the function of artery is to carry the blood from heart to the different parts of the body let us say this is heart okay this is roughly drawn see this is your artery here Okay, artery. So they are artery. Okay, artery. So actually, there are two kinds of artery: artery and pulmonary artery. Let us say pulmonary artery. All right. So artery carries the pure blood from heart to the different parts of the body, and pulmonary artery carries impure blood from heart to the lungs for purification. But whatever it is, in general, arteries carries arteries carry blood from heart to the different parts of the body. Okay, second we have veins. Okay, so let's talk about veins. So just contrary to artery, okay, these veins have thin muscular walls. Okay, thin muscular walls with valves. All right, and the function of vein is to carry the blood from different parts of the body to the heart okay to the heart they bring to the heart like that okay so they are the veins they are the veins they carry blood into the heart okay they carry blood into the heart from different parts of the body veins collect the blood and bring it to the heart all right so these veins are also two types that is veins and you know uh, you know veins and pulmonary veins okay veins uh, and pulmonary veins so they uh, whatever it is but their function is to collect the blood from different parts of the body into the heart all right then third type of blood vessel we have is capillary okay so capillary uh, which is shown here in the book also here you see see capillary i'll just uh, draw it here This diagram was drawn uh, in the beginning of this chapter also. Let me draw it once again. All right. So this is actually a capillary, okay? So this capillary actually uh, is our capillary and the you know, terminal branches of an artery which rejoin to form a vein. That means terminal branches means you know the ending branches of you know artery. So this is your artery which is coming here and then ending out here. So these are the ending branches of this 
artery which rejoin to form a vein. Rejoin to form a vein. Okay. So a capillary is a very narrow blood vessel. Okay. It's a very narrow blood vessel uh, whose walls have a single layer of cells. Whose walls? You see that cell and the wall has got, and the wall of this capillary has got a layer of single cell. I mean, a single layer of cells, I mean, has got a single layer of cells and uh, the wall of the capillary, okay, the wall of the capillary is so thin that an exchange of nutrients, waste products and gases takes place very easily between the blood and the, you know, body fluids, okay, so this is all about here, uh, you know, blood vessels, arteries, veins, and capillaries. All right. So today in this session, we'll talk only uh, uh, this much, and uh, we'll continue in the next session. All right. Thank you very much.